I just want to welcome you to coming to Beyond Ferguson, um, our teach-in looking at race, state violence, and activist agendas for social justice in the 21st century. Um, to get us started, I want to, um, we have a lot of thank yous that we need to, to put out on the table. Um, the idea for doing a teach-in is something that I and you know a bunch of colleagues kind of started saying to each other um, in late November and December as marches and protests were starting to happen in response to the non-indictments of the officers responsible for the killings of uh, Mike Brown and Eric Garner. And you know we'd kind of say, hey, you know we should do a teach-in. Yeah, we should. And then we'd you know go back to our daily lives. And a bunch of us ended up marching together, in particular at the Black Lives Rally that was held, uh, started at Garfield High School um, on, our, on or around December 10th. And after that, I think we really just kind of knew, yeah, we're, we're going to do this. Um, but, but doing this is something that would have taken a long time um, and would not be happening so soon, um, would not be happening the week of uh, that we recognize Martin Luther King Jr., which was important to us as far as timing is concerned. It wouldn't be happening now if it weren't for the fact that at the same time, um, Sheila Lang, the Vice Provost for Minority Affairs and Diversity, um, and Anna Marikowski, the Provost of the University, both kind of put the word out on the street that they were willing and ready to support um, anything that faculty were doing to try to help our campus community and, and our regional community respond to this crisis. And so our first thanks, um, huge thanks, go to our provost, Anamari Kause. <laughs> and to the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity um, for, for making it possible for us to immediately, even though we were all dispersing into our sort of, you know, turn off the email zone of the, of the holidays, um, we were able to dish through email. This, this happened without a single face-to-face -face meeting. All of this we did um, by email. And that was possible because we knew from the get-go that we had resources. Otherwise, we would have spent the next month running around begging various units um, just for the, the resources to do something like this. Um, at the same time, my colleague, Rolina Joseph, from the communication department, um, who just so happened to have just been in the process of launching um, a wonderful new institution for our campus, the Center for Communication Difference and Equity, said, hey, Steph, if you want, <laughs> um, we can use the center, even though it officially hasn't even launched yet, we can use the center as a kind of headquarters, as a source of administrative support um, to, to make this happen. And so that also was a huge thing that made this possible. So we are very grateful to Relina and to the center. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the mic over to the Provost, Ana Maricasse, who actually just wants to say a few words. Well, thank you so much. Even if it's not, yeah, hey, it is on. Um, I'm usually pretty good at projecting. Um, I, I just wanted to say a few words to um, let you know how incredibly appreciative, but also how incredibly proud I am to be at a university where we have the kind of committed faculty who are taking off a Friday that they could be doing a lot of other important things um, and so many committed students and staff who are also taking off their time to be here to really put their heads together and think about what next in the face of the tragedies that we've all experienced and that we've all felt that we've all seen. Um, when this was going on in the, actually throughout uh, late November through about mid-December, I had pneumonia. So I wasn't out there with you folks marching. I would have been, no question, otherwise. But I was following it um, on social media. Um, and I was through Facebook, et cetera, um, interacting with students from this university and hearing about um, the pain the rage, the fear at what was going on. And I um, just want you to know that I understand it. Um, this isn't the moment to talk about my personal history, although I've told students that I'd be more than glad to talk about it in a more informal setting. But those of you that are aware of it know that, and I don't only understand, I felt that pain, that fear, that rage. 
I really know what it's like to have your brothers um, killed and then it disappear as if it didn't happen and as if nobody cared. And quite frankly, if it weren't for the organization, if it weren't for your marches, if it weren't for your talking, if it weren't for your screaming at that time, it would have disappeared because it's not anything new. Our Dean, Ed Taylor, talked, had an editorial for Martin Luther King that was really beautiful, and if you haven't read it, I really urge you to. And part of what he said, quoting someone that does not have the privilege of the kind of education that you have, that you're getting, that I've had the privilege of getting, said, was quoting a, a, an older black man who said, well, and I'm paraphrasing, we aren't where we were, but we aren't where we need to be. Or we ain't where we were, we ain't where we need to be. And I think that that, I think, captures it very well. I think that part of what you're all going to talk today about, and I think it's so important, history is important. And I think that we will learn we are not where we were. 10, 20 years ago, when this stuff was happening because it's not new, nobody was talking about it. It just kind of disappeared. And so it's a real step forward that we are talking about it, that we are acknowledging, that we are angry. At the same time, we're not where we need to be. This stuff can't keep happening. And we need to figure out how do we step forward. And the best way to know how to plant your feet firmly stepping forward is really looking at the past. And you have some of the best people in the world to share with you their research and then to be able to talk to each other and to think about what's next. I'm not going to be here for the next piece, but I will come back at lunch. And I know that between now and then, you will all be smarter people. <laughs> so thank you very much for letting me say a few words in here. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you very much for those counseling. Um, I just want to really quickly, before I turn the mic over to Elena, I want to say one more thing about how this came together. Which is, you know, how, do you, how do you organize a teaching? Um, for us, it started by you know, sending an email to just a bunch of faculty colleagues and saying, hey, what do you think? Want to do a teaching? Um, and you know, to the point that Anamari made about you know, what it means for faculty to, to commit, for all of us, faculty and all of you as participants, to commit to being here all day on a Friday, um, one of the amazing things that happened is that a long list of faculty said, yeah, what can I do to help? Um, I'll block that day off on my calendar. I can't read all the names of what became a sort of ad hoc faculty working group because it would, I'd be here for another 10 minutes, it's a long list, but you all know who you are. Um, some of that group will be up here as presenters, um, but there are so many more faculty beyond those who are formally presenting who were part of this kind of really, really wide-based coalition um, that just came together quite organically. And this could not have happened without that kind of um, collaborative working um, among us as colleagues. And so I'm really, really grateful to that and want to really acknowledge that. And now, Melina's going to talk a little more about teachings and what we plan to do for today. Thanks, Deb. So thank you again to all of you all for coming here to this teaching. And as we were talking about doing a teaching, I think that it made sense for us instinctively, right? And we had these kind of images in our mind of what exactly teaching meant. And, um, and yet, none of us actually had done the research about what was the history of the teaching. So I went to my first, first stop shopping, which is always Wikipedia. Um, as professor, I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, so I went, and, and our good friends at Wikipedia tell us uh, that according to them, the first teaching was coined in 1965 by a group of University of Michigan faculty who wanted to protest their own students being drafted to the Vietnam War. So this is the first teaching sometime in early in 1965. A couple of weeks later, since that went so well, this group of a dozen white male faculty grew to about 50 
white male faculty. Another week or two later, this group of 50 grew to a group of 3,500. A huge rally through SDS, the Students for a Democratic Society, that came together with the faculty with larger members of the community and began this thing, according to Wikipedia, uh, known as the teaching. But of course, we know that even though it might not have been scripted this way, that for large, much longer periods of time, people who have not necessarily had access to those resources, to that education, perhaps even to that literacy, have come together to teach each other the stories that we don't always have access to. To teach each other how to move forward tangibly. To not just keep things in theory, but to put them actually into practice. And so that is what we're going to be doing here today together. You're going to hear from some of my wonderful esteemed colleagues. Uh, they are not going to be doing a scholarly talk. This is really about participatory, action-oriented, uh, learning together, and really moving forward, thinking about how do we tangibly move forward from this day to help create solutions. We don't want to remain mired in the frustrations that so many of us have about the seemingly state-sanctioned racialized violence. We want to figure out how do we collectively speak back to that. And we're going to have, you know, we're having these sessions set up during uh, some breakout time, during lunchtime. I think that's a perfect time to think about how to make this, the, what you're learning today, applicable um, to whatever, whatever is your own backyard. Um, so please, yeah, take that opportunity. So we'll go ahead and now set up the next, the first panel for today. <laughs>